Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 13th, 2023 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Aiken. Aiken here. Burton. Burton here. Knauer. Knauer here. Tidings. Tidings here. Sangster. Sangster here. Weiser. Weiser here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Prinzing. Prinzing here. Gray here. Okay. We have uh, minutes from July 22nd's uh, work session. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. And can we entertain a motion to approve? I'll do that. Motion to approve. Tidings second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. <clears throat> Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, we have uh, <coughs> two public hearings this evening and some tabled items. We typically begin our meetings at 6.30 with a work session to cover uh, tabled items that we have and then immediately move into our public hearing portion of the meeting. If the tabled items take longer than a half hour, we, we typically have a hard stop at seven o'clock and begin the public hearing at seven o'clock. Tonight we have just one item on the tabled item, so we'll begin the public hearing probably, if I had to guess, around 6.35. So um, <laughs> if you're the number one person on the agenda, get ready. So um, Doug, if you wanna go through our tabled applications. Yep. <clears throat> You could, Sorry, we're having some small you speak technical loud. difficulty because this one's not uh, <laughs> catching anything. Well, it's for dictation too, um, right? Uh, for accessibility. <coughs> okay, so tabled application number one, 1676 Penfield Road. Um, we've been speaking with the applicant. We have nothing new to report right now. They're working on getting a site plan to us. Okay. Continue table. Terry. Yeah. Writings. I will second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. <coughs> All right. That does it for our tabled application, so <laughs> we will, looks like we're a little early, moving on to the public <laughs> hearing portion of our, of our meeting. Um, we have, if you haven't been here before and you're not familiar with the process, we have a sketch plan and an actual site plan for uh, preliminary and final approval. The difference between those, a sketch plan is a, um, an informal application without as much detail as an actual application. So somebody may have an idea for a development, they do some preliminary work on that idea, they, uh, the initial steps, they bring it into the planning department and the engineering department at the town and they do their initial review and then it's scheduled typically for a sketch plan here and they want to get feedback from the board as well as the community. So the purpose of that is to solicit opinions and, and comments from the community. So uh, as such, be prepared to see not as much actual detail. The second item is a full application that should have all the full details. They may not have all the details that we want, but then we ask them for those, for those details. Um, the way the schedule of events will go, the applicant will come up to one of the two tables here present their project to us and to you and to the millions watching around the planet on streaming online and all the services that we stream on. And um, then the board will ask questions of the applicant and then we open it up for public comment. If you're present here, raise your hand and I'll acknowledge you or there's these slips of paper over on the, the table over there that you could fill out. If I butcher your name, please forgive me. Um, 
I'll do my best. And um, what am I forgetting? Oh, if the applicant is, say, at that table, you come up to the other table, please address your comments to the board, not to the applicant. If you are not here, you can call in at 585-340-8771. Operators are standing by downstairs in the control room uh, to put you in the queue. Or you could go to the Penfield website. It's www.penfield.org. And uh, on the home page, there should be a link to this meeting and you can submit your comments electronically. So with that, Doug, would you read our sketch plan application? All right, uh, land, te land Tech Surveying and Planning, PLLC, 1105 Ridgeway <coughs> Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14615, on behalf of Lou Siriani, request an informal discussion before the board with concept plans for a five-lot residential subdivision on 11.93 acres at 976 and 978 State Road, Webster, New York, 14580. The property is now or formerly owned by Lou Siriani and zoned Rural Residential, RR1. Application 23P-0008, SBLs 094.02-1-15.2 and 094.02-1-15.3. Okay. That's a good question. Um, Do we have what? In a perfect world, we, have an easy uh, we need it in front of the camera. We need we need to be able to see it, and the audience needs to be able to see it, and the world needs to be able to see it. Well, uh, PC TV will pull it up on the big TV over there too. Um, okay. But I'll see. I don't know if we have an easel in this room anymore. Right. Right there. Oh, you got one too. Man, what happened to the 1990s? <laughs> Me too. Uh, I think that'll work. Brian, can you get that? Is that where you want it, Brian? Yeah, and we'll be bringing it up on the big TV over there as well. Okay, I think we're good. You might need to buy a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <coughs> do you want to sit here and then uh, begin your presentation? Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, planning board members and citizens of Penfield. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I grew up in Penfield, that I now live in Victor. But I'm representing Mr. Siriani. Uh, I'm from Land Tech Engineering and Surveying in Rochester. So we're here to present the sketch plan for the five lot subdivision, as Mr. Sangster mentioned. If you could just, uh, for the record, your name and oh, address. I'm yeah, I'm John Hotto of Land Tech Engineering and Surveying. So we've uh, submitted this uh, project in concept form. Um, it's a five lot subdivision. There's currently one house on State Road that will be lot number five, and that will be, uh, you know, maintained as it is. Um, lots uh, four and three are basically coming out of that property, and Mr. Siriani is also ownership of the, uh, the Easterly property as well. Um, we're proposing a, a right-of-way in there for a driveway, and uh, utility services. There's also a turnaround for emergency vehicles at the northerly end of this right of way. Uh, we understand that the site has a wood, Woodlands EPOD, which we've been uh, cognizant of uh, in terms of the sketch plan. We're trying to minimize impacts to that. Uh, we are proposing um, sanitary sewer laterals that will be pumped um, to State Road. There's currently a manhole that ends westerly of the project site. It's only five foot deep, roughly, and we're proposing to extend that and have individual, four individual uh, force laterals, force main laterals, 
to this extended sanitary sewer. I haven't worked out the details yet, but that's the basic idea. Um, gravity is not really feasible because of the shallowness of the existing sewer. If I extend it to the east to our property entranceway, it don't, it, I really can't technically based on slopes. It would be pop out of the ground more or less. So we're, we're gonna extend it as far east as we can and then the four laterals will be force mained, will be pressurized to that extended uh, sanitary sewer. Uh, we're currently working with Monroe County Water Authority for water services. What we're proposing is, is, is an eight inch uh, water main into the site with a hydrant at the end of it for, for fire protection. Um, the Monroe County Water Authority has different rules for different sites and numbers of lots, but I think it's most feasible, excuse me, to bring in a water main that's pressurized and then laterals to each of the four houses, uh, the new houses. The existing house will be maintained as, you know, their lateral is already connected, obviously, to the water main at State Road on the south side. Um, we did receive your comments um, from the engineering department or planning department. I sent a letter to Mr. Sangster in response to those comments yesterday. I wasn't sure if you had any more comments on that. I understand that um, it's an impaired waterway and we need to provide some sort of post-construction stormwater management practice, but we'd like to work with you closely to decipher exactly what you want there because Mr. Siriani does not want to install a wet pond. It's kind of uh, detrimental to residential areas with little kids and stuff like that. But I did some research and the soils there are a uh, Madrid sandy fine loam. We might be able to do some infiltration there instead of standing water. Uh, but again, we want to minimize the disruption to the, the woodland setting there because that's a plus when you're trying to sell uh, home sites like that. So each lot, the four new lots, will be a woodland setting as best we can. Uh, that's why we kind of avoided the leach field situation as well. We, you know, we don't want to disrupt the site and there is a sewer that we believe we can uh, utilize to handle the wastewater. Any, any questions? From okay, thank you for your presentation. Mr. Sirianni, did you have any input on that? Okay, Kelly, you wanna start? Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. um, so I drove down that area the other day. Um, there's a lot of houses there on Shoecraft. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about how close those houses are gonna be to the already existing homes on Shoecraft? Cause it doesn't really show. Uh, I've got a simple tax map here. Um, they're basically going to be, you know, the closest house is going to be maybe 100 feet away from the back lines of those houses on Shoecraft. And you're going to keep some of the green Absolutely. so that there'll be the privacy? Absolutely. We want to maintain that buffer area. And in, in that sketch, all the houses are conforming to the required yard setbacks front, side, rear. Okay. Um, the lot five, the existing house, so that house is gonna stay Correct. as is? Yes. Does Mr. Sirianni own that house or who owns that house? Uh, will you maintain, who, I, I think the original people will maintain it. Correct? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna live there. Yeah. Okay. And they're selling off part of their property to make the lots four and three? Yeah, exactly, the northerly Two thirds, roughly. And so, who owns the property lot one and two? Mr. Siriani. Mr. Siriani yeah. does. Okay, okay. Um, and then looking at the road that will go back there, because when I did drive by, it's very, very narrow. The entryway. Yeah. So, are you going to have? You're going to be able to have a driveway big enough for cars coming and going and housing. Oh yeah, there, it, the frontage is about 70 feet, and the driveway is going to be about 20 feet of pavement. And they're technically going to be flag lots. So each of the new four lots will have roughly 19 feet of frontage on State Road. 
Okay. Um, they don't look like flag lots, but that, I mean, we have to have, each lot has to have frontage on State Road. Each lot, meaning, so lot three, lot two, you're gonna be able to see that as you pull in? Yes, yeah. Okay, because it seemed that end there seems so narrow. It's about 70 feet, yeah, it just, it's narrow, there's no question about it. Yeah. Okay. But it's, uh, that's the way the land is. Um, that's how that was subdivided. Right, right. Good. Okay. Um, Plan on having an HOA, or what type of uh, just a maintenance agreement for the? Uh, I'm assuming private drive. Yes, with a, with a, basically an easement over the top of it. Okay. Um, and the plan is to maintain as many of the woods as possible. Correct. And screening from yep. neighbors. So forth. Okay. Any other board I, questions? I have one yeah. more. So, mm -hmm. who will be in charge of snow removal for the whole street? It's a good question. Who's going to do snow removal? It's going to have to be maintained by four to four lots under an agreement. Yeah, the four new owners will have to come to some agreement to hire a, a plow, a snow plow guy. Okay. It'll be maintained by me until all four are built. Okay. Jim, did you have a couple questions? I, I just wanted to make one, one comment. You indicated that the pavement would be 20 feet. Uh, double check Appendix D of the fire code, I believe, when the drive lane exceeds 500 feet, you're required to have uh, a driveway width of 26 feet. 26 feet. Um, I'll check into that. Um, it's going to be what was it? What was the maximum distance? Well, there's a there's a table in Appendix D of uh, the fire code. Uh, okay, sets forth the, some of the different parameters for uh, driveways um, when the length of the drive exceeds a certain distance, and when it goes past 500 feet, I believe the minimum width of the fire access roadway is 26 feet. Okay. So there's, you don't actually have a dimension back here. You've got a couple of dimension strings on here, but if you were to go beyond 750 feet, then you need uh, 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 special approval for that. So anyhow, take a, take a hard look at that, please. Okay. I guess I have another question. It's RR1 zoning? Yes. So essentially one acre lots? Correct. And um, you know, each of these is approaching either very close to or over two acres. Is there, I'm not, not suggesting you do this, but is there a reason why you chose four versus six or something? We didn't want to overdevelop it. So keeping the uh, privacy and um, buffer from the surrounding community, giving the neighbors some additional privacy. Exactly. Okay. Bob, yeah. Gary, any questions? <clears throat> I had a question for the, for the forced mains for each house. <coughs> Um, has it been decided who would own those and who would maintain? Well, each individual lot, like I mentioned before, does have like a, a flag extension to State Road. Right. And, and each person's force main lateral will be within that sliver of land. Right. So each owner at this preliminary stage will be responsible for their own wastewater lateral. Okay, including the the pumping equipment yeah, and so forth. They'd yeah. be responsible for yes. the equipment and the maintenance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No questions. Okay. I'm also thank you. Any other questions from the board at the moment? I'm good. Okay. At this point we'll open it up to the audience. Again, if you're not here 
Uh, you can call in at 585-340-8771 or visit the Penfield website at penfield.org and submit your comments electronically. But I have two people who have signed up. The first one will be Christopher Bull. Is Christopher Bull here? And the procedure for this, uh, if you could, no, you can come on up, <laughs> grab a chair here, uh, speak into the microphone again so that the, you know, raving fans uh, around the planet can see. Lovely. And um, state your name and address and then your comments. Great. Um, my name is Chris Christopher Bull. Um, this is my wife. Jessica Bull. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, we, uh, we both reside at 980 State Road. Yeah, so okay. the little square right over the there. The little square at the bottom, that yeah. one, yeah. Okay, in the southwest corner. Uh, yes. That's correct. Okay. Um, I guess, you know, when, when, when we, you know, chose to come here this evening, our, our main concern for us is how much the property is being developed. I understand a lot of the conversation here this evening, you know, relates to utilities and the basics and the fundamentals and, you know, how, how will services be rendered to, to the proposed, you know, additional residential home sites. Um, you know, from, from my standpoint, you know, we already have a private drive on the other side of our property. And so this would mean a secondary private drive on the other side of the property that would extend back a similar distance to what we already have, um, kind of shoehorning our lot between the two private roads. Um, this this is, would be a significant change to us, you know, to what we purchased the property for, give or take, eight, eight years ago, something like that. Um, I'm, I'm estimating here. Um, you know, we bought this because it was surrounded, you know, on almost all sides by woods, um, both across the street and and between us and the applicant uh, of of the home. So that that would be a, a significant change for us. We have two small children, um, and we would just have concerns about, you know, uh, having having more construction, more work, more 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 road frontage that sort of thing so um, for us it's it's while well, we understand of course utilities are an important part of the aspect and we didn't talk about power and all the other stuff that would have to go back to that that those home sites to make those fully functional um, you know for us the concerns would be you know change in in the 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 tree density you know what are we talking about from a change um, and I guess that would be kind of my question, you know, that we're roundabout getting to here, is, uh, you know, what impact are we going to be really seeing to the woodlands here, right? I, we're saying, hey, yes, they'll be back there, they'll be protected, sure, there will be existing privacy, but it's not what it is today, right? And so I guess I'm, I'm trying to understand what change we should be expecting, how close the homes will physically be to ours, those sort of, like, nuts and bolts. Okay. All right, we can... Probably get those answers for you. That would be great. Thank you very much. Did you have anything I, else to add? I, I would like to say, sir, that this is just a sketch plan. Certainly, so it's a yeah. very rudimentary, <clears throat> conceptual plan. Sure. Um, so, as this process continues, if they choose to continue the process, then if you'd like to continue to participate, you'll see more detail and hear more information about the process and the impact to the property. Understood. And, you know, we appreciate that we have these, you know, abilities to have conversations with the town and with, you know, uh, neighbors, right, generally. You know, we uh, uh, we get a lot of value from that. We have two small kids. So we have someone watching our kids tonight so we can be here. Um, and so obviously, like, this is this is a tough time. <laughs> but, you know, we want to make it work and, and be here when we need to. So that's the... That's sure. Yeah. I mean, just looking at it, I'm... Assuming you probably, other than seeing the drive go in, you it's very unlikely that you would even know that there are houses back there with the trees. That would be my guess. I can't speak for them, but I'm just looking at mm -hmm. the overhead and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the other, uh, the other comment I guess I would make is. The overall acreage is, John, how many acres overall? 11.9 acres. How many? 11.9. 11 11 11 11.9. So could be argued that uh, with one acre zoning, you can get 
essentially one house per acre. So it's almost 12 acres. So probably they could come in with an eight lot subdivision and you'd have eight houses instead of four. And that would be a league that they'd fit within the zoning for that. I, I, so, I respect that, but it is a protected woodland as well, right? So there is a certain respect that has to be paid to that woodland that is there. <clears throat> and so I understand the comment very much so about, you know, hey, there there could be more, right? right. But I think that defeats the point of, of the woodland protection of that zone. Right. But I, I, I don't mean to interrupt your No, comment. no, that's okay. okay. That's all right. Okay. That's it for me, Jess. I think you covered it. Okay. I, I was just going to ask, um, I haven't had time to really look into that protection, but is does anybody know whether there is a stated amount that is um, protected of that area? So are there actual, you know, uh, percentages that need to be maintained? Is it like 50%, 40%? Is, is there something stated? Because I, I know that you've said previously We'll, we'll keep as much as possible. Right. It's, it's a, a vague That's a very term. subjective term. Right. right, yeah. Yeah. I can't speak to the specifics. I haven't, I don't think we've had an application with uh, woodland EPODs in a, quite a while. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. So the, the woodlot Doug, EPOD does it off the top of your head? necessarily prevents any development. It just provides a higher level of scrutiny. Um, some of that scrutiny may come through a referral to the um, Energy and Environmental Conservation Committee who will, um, uh, you know, take a look at the site and provide recommendations and feedback to the planning board for their consideration. Um, it could look something like requiring that um, the applicant go out and designate large caliper trees for preservation. Um, uh, requiring some form of additional buffer or um, in some cases uh, planting additional trees to maintain the wooded um, nature of the lot but a lot of that will depend on the specifics of the application when a full application is received and we see things like the limited disturbance the, the actual amount of area that they'll be clearing to do the the home lots and things like that and thanks how does that, Im I, mean, I guess my curiosity would, was, I appreciate, you know, your answer here. I guess I'd be curious as well to understand, um, hey, you know, that's the first pass, right? Like when it's built, but once those private residences are sold off, right? Like then what rules did they have to adhere to those new, new owners? Um, once new homeowners are in, we don't have uh, a, there's no, um, we do not prevent private homeowners from removing trees from their own property unless it's in a conservation easement or some other protected category. And even then there are caveats for things like dead, dying, diseased trees. Dutch elms disease is going around, emerald ash borers are going around, so things like ash trees and elm trees are more likely to be coming down. Um, if they lo were looking to clear cut, um, it would likely require a permit um, to be reviewed by the engineering department. Thanks. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Jaina and Timo Jackal. Welcome. Hello. So. I just have to interrupt here. Do you, do you remember meeting about 30 years ago? I do. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember where? Um, I think it was a mutual friend's house, right? No, it wasn't. It was no? at uh, Parkley Pharmacy. You surprised me because I was looking for a Valentine for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You saw my picture on her desk or something. My wife's Diana. That's right. Yeah, we used to be co-workers yeah. at GM. Yeah, now Bob Many works for ago. you. Right. right. You'll be pleased. Anyway, to I don't mean to go together. off on this, people. Yeah. But yeah. Small right. world. Good, good my fun my you, son yeah. married uh, his coworker's daughter. So anyway. Right. Not that everybody on the planet needs to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, please. Yep. <laughs> please come on. All right. Uh, I didn't mean to throw you off oh. either. <laughs> yep. So I'm, I'm Jana Jackal, and um, we live at 7 Misty Trail. I'm Timo Jackal. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, our property uh, borders, well, both lots, 
To the north. To the north. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if this is helpful or not, if I can approach you. Um, I have, we just put together some thoughts. We included in here um, the map of the EPOD demarcation for, our, for the property that we're talking about, as well as uh, the EPOD code <coughs> and uh, the, the actual percentage. Uh, in here is that, um, why don't you speak? Maybe you should speak and I'll <laughs> hand these out. May, may I hand these out? Sure. Yeah, maybe hand them to uh, Doug and then they can pass them down the Le leave one the table or for me to reference, please. Thank you. We can share if necessary. All right. So we, we went through the, the EPOD code, uh, specifically the section on the Woodland Protection uh, Overlay District. And uh, just to kind of get a preliminary understanding from our perspective of the intent uh, of the code. And the, the code uh, has a couple of, of um, requirements that we think are there to preserve the not just the trees, but the underbrush uh, that really uh, gives it the density and um, uh, protects both the, the, the wildlife habitats and also the visual appearance of those woods. Um, so um, do you mind if I quote a couple sections? Sure. Okay. So this is uh, um, uh, uh, paragraph one, the purpose of the Woodland Protection Overlay District and tree prevention zone regulation is to preserve and protect woodland and measurable stands of trees within the town of Penfield <coughs> by regulating or controlling development in those areas and by requiring review and conditional permit approval prior to project commencement. Uh, section three, uh, in terms of regulated activities, no person shall conduct any of the following regulated activities within any woodland protection overlay district or tree preservation zone in the town of Penfield unless such person has first applied for and obtained an EPOD development uh, permit pursuant to the requirements of this section. And then there are a list of, of conditions. A any application for a permit to undertake uh, regulated activity within a woodland uh, uh, protection overlay district or tree preservation zone in the town of Penfield shall be required to adequately demonstrate to the authorized official or the board having justification that the proposed activity will in no way at present or any time in the future uh, adversely affect the following on uh, their soil stability, velocity of uh, surface water runoff. Um, uh, number five is significant wildlife habitats, including wildlife corridors. And number eight is noise levels and visual impacts on adjacent areas. And then the last section I wanted to draw the board's attention to is in planning site development uh, plans, the applicant shall preserve as much of the original site vegetation, including understory brush shrubs as possible. Uh, the use of town law 278 should be considered when dealing with sites where stands of mature trees are present. So the, the purpose of us bringing that to the board is uh, like our neighbors, we, when we purchased our property, the attraction and the value of that property was that it's, it's somewhat isolated being up against that woodland, uh, both as you come down the drive and then, and then to the side of our house and um, uh, we'd like to you know, make sure that we're gonna continue to have that same visual uh, effect and not have the underbrush and, and significant trees removed as a result of this development. Okay. Did that make note of the 90%, preserving the 90%? I didn't. I don't think it was that in that piece. section. Yeah. Right here. It's in this, anyway. Okay, anything you wanna add? Okay, I guess one thing we didn't highlight, um, what is that, oh, section C, um, once the conservation board and the planning board have reviewed this, the applicant site engineer should then calculate to the satisfaction of the conservation board and planning board or town board as the case may be that no more than 10% of the original woodland protection overlay district or tree preservation zone that exists on the property will be disturbed. So there are some, there are some parameters included in the EPOD code. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for hearing us.
Okay, would anyone else like to comment on this application? Okay, let me check and see if we have any calls. We have no phone calls. And we have no electronic submissions. Any other questions from the board? Any final comments? And again, this is a sketch plan. We are sensitive to the, the EPOD woodlands. Um, unfortunately, a, a lot of it, I, there's probably quite a bit of dead ash in there, un, unfortunately, so um, we're aware of that as well. But we're trying to be, we want to create attractive home sites like the neighbors to the north who are enclosed and with the privacy, and that's what we're trying to recreate with these four new homes. And we don't want to mow it down and just, you know, totally disturb it or anything like that, so. Okay. Great. Thank you for your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So the uh, process at this point, the planning board will uh, begin to write a response letter uh, with comments, and that will probably go out. My guess would be approve that the next meeting, which is August. Is there anything we need to do before the next meeting? Uh, doubt it. I doubt it. No, uh, we'll, we'll let if, Doug know when he if communicates staff with has you any if more that's... comments based on the revised plans that were provided. <clears throat> we'll provide those comments. Um, the board will begin drafting their letter. Um, the letter will outline the comments and concerns of the board. Staff will likely include um, <coughs> that as part of our PRC memos, um, and then the board will send out that letter with our comment, their comments and concerns. All right. it, it might be beneficial to you, though, if you want to proceed with this application, maybe set up a meeting with the engineering department. We can discuss the stormwater facilities. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. All right, Doug, if you'd like to read the second uh, we'll keep one copy of item on the agenda tonight. And if the applicant's here and they want to get set up, all right, application number two, Bowler, Engin Bowler Engineering MA, LLC, 70 Linden Oaks, Rochester, New York, 14625, on behalf of Cary Ventures, <coughs> Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, LLC, requests under Chapter 250, Article 11-11.2, .2, Article 12-12.2, .2, and Article 13-13.2, of the Code of the Town of Penfield for a new public hearing for a preliminary and final subdivision, site plan, and conditional use permit uh, for the proposed construction of a 5,600 plus or minus square foot Chick-fil-A restaurant building with drive through and associated site improvements on 5.1 acres located at 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road and 2195 Penfield Road, Fairport, New York 14450. The property is now or formerly owned by Cary Ventures Fairport Nine Mile Point Road LLC and zoned General Business GB. Application number 23P-0007, SBL number 140.01-2-4.1 and 140.01-2-6.998. The applicant was previously here before the planning board on June 9th, 2022 as application 22P-0015. <coughs> Um, just for those out in the audience, we're having a second public hearing on this application due to the length of time between the previous public hearing and now, and it provides you, the community, uh, an opportunity to provide comments and feedback on the proposal and review the application anew. Okay. Welcome. Great. Thank you. It's good to be back. Uh, good evening, everyone. Tim Freitag with Bowler Engineering here on behalf of the applicant Chick-fil-A Inc. to continue the discussions for our site plan review and conditional use permit for the redevelopment of 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Uh, it's good to be back. It certainly has been some time since we've been here. I think some are excited to stop sending me emails of tabled application <laughs> notices, so I appreciate everybody's patience as we, as we work through the details here. Um, I'll, I'll give just a brief summary of the project in whole for those in the audience who may be listening and not familiar with the project. 
I'll highlight some of the minor modifications since this board has last seen our application. Uh, we'll host our, our public hearing to solicit any feedback or comments that we may be able to address or take home with us to address. And then we're also here tonight pursuing um, a discussion or recommendation about an additional uh, variance that we may need for this project based on the modifications that we've made. Uh, project overview, it includes two parcels uh, at uh, 2130 Fairport and Nine Mile Point Road, former uh, Cornerstone Restaurant and Cafe. Both properties overall about 5.1 acres. Uh, the project does involve a lot line adjustment between the two properties. We're looking to increase the lot that the proposed uh, quick serve restaurant is on to a little over two acres for the proposed development. Uh, as, as some may know, the, the existing uh, building on site has already been demolished, uh, make, paving the way for, for future redevelopment here. We lie in the GB General Business District. Quick serve restaurants are permitted subject to site plan review and a conditional use permit through this board. The proposed site plan includes a 5,600 square foot quick serve restaurant. It's got a dual drive through lane with a, a, an essentially a, a third uh, order lane or bypass lane that will be utilized most of the time as bypass. Uh, in addition to the building for the restaurant, it includes two detached uh, canopies over the drive through to help protect um, team members working in the drive through but also patrons uh, as they uh, navigate the order area and the meal delivery area of the drive through The site contains uh, parking, drive through lighting, landscaping, and associated appurtenances uh, for this project. The overall parking count on the site is now at 105 spaces solely within the uh, proposed lot for the quick serve restaurant. The drive through at maximum capacity has a capacity of, of nearly 50 cars should that ever be needed uh, given the demand for this user. Since the board has last seen the site plan, the site plan in front of you now. The major difference is, uh, if you may recall, we were proposing some shared parking off our site. That led to uh, a lot of discussions uh, from the applicant and the landlord, but also the town's concern of, of ancillary parking lots are not, not allowed uh, on a lot. They have to accompany a building over there. Uh, we, we've gone back and uh, maximized the parking uh, capacity on our site, but we also were careful not to eliminate the stacking capacity of the drive through so we were trying to balance parking and stacking. Uh, based on the determination of uh, code enforcement, the requirement for our use based on load occupancy of our facility requires 115 parking spaces, so we are um, 10 shy. We initially submitted a plan that demonstrated if we reduced the stacking capacity of the drive through we essentially could meet the parking demand, but based on our experience with this user, we'd rather have the additional capacity within the drive through than the parking lot. Uh, for your perspective, a couple um, other stores you may be familiar with have um, similar uh, parking requirements or, or demands. Uh, both Arondacoy and, and Henrietta's locations have about a, a drive through capacity of a little under 30 cars and parking around the 70 parking spot um, capacity. So, so both in the drive through and the parking lot here, we still are over um, those two facilities. We do want a little bit more capacity here. Uh, Chick-fil-A as the proposed uh, tenant here, they project out uh, three, five, 10 year growth plans, and they haven't identified any um, sites generally within the area of this site, so they do think this will be a site uh, in this area for, for standalone and not an, another uh, close by location for some time, so they, they, th they think it would be good to have the additional parking and stacking capacity um, at this location. The other locations, uh, <coughs> are part of shopping centers that oftentimes have overflow parking capacity should they ever need it too, and here we don't have that. So we do have a, a little bit of a cushion on parking, but we feel like it's the right number, and we do meet the 30% green space requirement for the proposed lot as well. 
other than the, the change to the, the off-site parking, there's no more um, parking off our site. Utilities, water, sewer connections, stormwater mitigation is all uh, similar to the former application. The building location is in the same spot. The entrance to the building, the ADA parking, the drive-through circulation, uh, the sidewalk pedestrian connectivity <coughs> is all generally the same of, of our prior application. Uh, back in June, we did host a, a public hearing. That, that meeting was open and closed. We also pursued uh, area variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals. We obtained approval for side yard setback and front yard setback for the uh, drive-through canopies. Those have been obtained along with the variances for the proposed signage to date. And then we are seeking the recommendation to go back to the Zoning Board for the parking variance deficiency. New York State DOT and uh, the town's third party consultant engineer have reviewed the uh, submitted traffic study back in last July or, or summer of 2022, um, both providing positive letters in concurrence with the uh, traffic impact studies uh, for this project. So we're, we're back here tonight, continue the project, hopefully uh, move this thing forward here shortly so, so those emails can can be cleaned up a little bit. Um, we'll turn it back over to the board for any questions, comments, and then certainly we'll, we'll listen in on any public comment and provide responses that we can. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Jim, you want to start off? <coughs> Still a little confused about the parking. Okay. <coughs> so on your zoning analysis table, can you, you have a calculation here. You hear me okay? You have a, uh, uh, a parking calculation that indicates uh, a total required number of spaces of 119. You indicate though in the main body of the table that um, what's required is 115 and that you're proposing 115. I believe you just told the board you're proposing now 105, but you also indicated that you're going to the ZBA for a variance from required number of parking spaces. So could you clear that up for us? Sure, so it, it's been a couple <coughs> months since this revised submission has been uh, submitted to the town and there was still some, un, there was still some uncertainty of how to uh, move the, the parking issue forward. Our initial uh, response submission included a, an exhibit that showed what we called bank parking that utilized the drive-through um, and demonstrated how if we reduce the stacking of the drive-through, we could meet code. Uh, since then, we've received comments back from the town that's recommending we go obtain the variance instead of that waiver. So this plan predates that letter back from the town. So. Um, basically saying let, let's not do the waiver approach or bank parking approach, let's go get the variance. So the table will be updated to eliminate the bank parking. And then also we received an updated determination from code enforcement, uh, Andy, on the calculations for the parking demand. His uh, calculations concluded 115 parking spaces required. So the zoning table also needs to be updated for that. Okay, so we're at 115 required, and so you're seeking a variance for a shortfall of 10 correct. spaces, is that correct? And in the event that the ZBA denies your request for a variance, what happens then? We'll have to revisit the uh, plan parking. D. <laughs> we'll have to, but but uh, un unfortunately, that's where we stand now. So we'll have okay. to go pursue this conversation. Yeah, with the uh, maybe I phrased that poorly. I, I'm wondering if you have an alternate plan in case the the zoning board um, doesn't isn't comfortable granting relief for ten spaces. Yeah, n nothing that I that I could say we have at this time. You know, it, it would be going back to see what the the calculation was for the uh, parking requirements.
But overall, we've got um, a lot of history rolling up the, Ch the Chick-fil-A program to the upstate New York market. And um, Bowler Engineering has actually partnered with Chick-fil-A. So we feel like we can build a, a pretty good uh, justification and, and ZBA application <laughs> justifying what Chick-fil-A has really experienced in the area for what they need for parking demand. Okay. Um, in, in your response to uh, uh, some of the town comments, you indicated that the um, loop road is being removed and relocated. Could you just describe for the audience um, what happens to that area that where the existing loop road is being removed? Sure, so there is a meandering loop road with a few turns um, that navigate through the back uh, portion of the site. And that's a good demonstration there of that loop road. So the meandering of that loop road is proposed to be removed and relocated up uh, closer to Fairport Nine Mile Road at the perimeter of our site location. The existing road is proposed to be uh, demolished and um, topsoil and grass would be reestablished in that area. Okay, thank you. Uh, your plan shows you've got uh, a grease trap and uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of uh, the recent change in the state law for um, grease trap lid safety. So I didn't see anything on the plan with respect to which of the options you intend to employ um, to ensure that the lid cannot be removed by a child and I didn't see any indication of the required signage indicating where the grease trap is. So I'd like to see the, the signage on there and some reference to which of the options permitted in state law you intend to employ um, to limit access. Certainly, we can provide that information. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to parking. You mentioned Henrietta and Aronacoit as, I guess, comparable examples. What has been the experience in terms of parking demand in those lots? You mentioned that I think each one of them has around 70 spots. Is the building the same size as here, as the proposed Penfield location? Yeah, so those locations were built um, pre-COVID. Since COVID, they had turned a new prototype, which this site deploys. So the, the main difference between them is the drive-through, and then this building's about 600 square feet larger. Okay. So this site's a little bit larger than those, those so locations. So more seating capacity? Uh, it's actually more kitchen capacity. Okay. This location will have... Um, same seating or less? Same seating, might be a little less, but a larger kitchen. The COVID impacts have really um, strengthened the drive-through traffic. Uh, we've heard that from virtually every yeah. operator that's come yep. here. So, so the expansion of the kitchen is to help supply more uh, of the drive-through, and here we've got the expanded drive-through to further help uh, those those drive-through um, services. So. There hasn't been any changes for the parking demand. They haven't seen the need for the parking demand and the seat count's been really the same or, or a little reduced. So it's more of an impact on the drive-through than the parking. In Arondequoit or Henrietta, have the lots ever been full? I, I don't have that information, but I can certainly um, go back and, and ask a few questions to dig in a little bit more detail to supplement the, the it, ZBA you application. You also mentioned that both those locations were part of a shopping center so it would have overflow parking. What about standalone locations, maybe Greece or even really anywhere? It doesn't have to be in Monroe County. Yeah. They're, but they're, if you could possibly look into that and see in a comparable situation, if they run into situations where if the parking is, let's say the variance is granted and we, uh, you end up with a hundred and five spots, what's the likelihood that it's full? And if so, how often? Sure, and, and Greece is a good comparison because it is a standalone site. It was one of the first to the Rochester market and I think everybody 
learned a lot from that location of, of good, bad, and different. Um, that had as a parking lot in the 50s, I believe, and a stacking capacity of, of 20, maybe 22. Um, just recently, last month, uh, Chick-fil-A obtained approvals to deploy the canopy and the larger drive through at that facility to, to help accommodate some of the demand they're seeing over there. So 50 and 20 was too small. Are they still seeing the same kind of crowds it, as they did initially? It's I mean, equalized. it was a hyped up thing for Monroe County. but Not from grand opening, and it's also equalized more from COVID. So the dining rooms are back open, so it's not as heavy in the drive through but there was certainly a, a reduction from one location in a market to multiple, and they continue to build more stores to help diversify some of that um, following. And spread it out. Yep. Okay, the other question I have is on the lighting plan. And I notice under the canopies, I'm looking at 43 foot candles, uh, some pretty significant light levels. <coughs> Are those necessary? Is that what's in place throughout the United States? Uh, I mean, that's brighter than here. Yeah, so the um, canopies have recessed LED lighting in, mm -hmm. in the canopies themselves. It's, it's very similar to I'd say a gas station for, for lighting underneath the canopy. The difference between these canopies and a gas station canopy is, is a gas station canopy is 14 feet in the air. These are the 10? Light. This is nine, nine and a half feet for that light. So the closer those lights are to the ground, the, the brighter they are at the ground surface because the light has less room to dissipate. So it, it's comparable in brightness. Um, we certainly want this area lit up well. There's going to be team members um, taking orders and delivering meals in a drive-through with vehicles, right? So you, mm -hmm. you want adequate um, lighting. Uh, I can certainly go back and, and ask the question if, if there's um, a lighter uh, luminaire that they could use or, or, or dim those a little bit to a more practical amount. But we certainly do want it brighter than, than the average parking lot. Understood. The other question I have is, can you provide <clears throat> um, almost a full lot ISO foot candle plot, uh, possibly with values like you have, so that we know what are the levels, say, at the eastern edge of the property? Uh, I'm assuming you have full cutoff luminaires? Yeah. Are they going to be controlled so they dim down after closing time? Yeah, they, they would follow um, store hours for, for lighting levels. Sometimes it's a 30 minute delay or so, but it would be full cutoff, dark sky compliant, uh, recessed lighting. So it's LED. You don't see um, the housing or the light bulb from the side. Mm -hmm. side. It's all um, isolated into the fixture itself. And then the after closing time Will they be on a control system that, that turns them, them down or off? Off? Okay. The elevations, could you possibly mark which ones are northeast, south, and west? I'm having a little bit of difficulty making sense of it. Sure. And what do you consider the front of the building? Do you consider any part of the building the front of the building? Yeah, we've certainly got a unique layout here where it's essentially four frontages um, as far as aesthetic appeal goes. But the, the front of the store, if you will, is facing the rear of the property because that's where your main entrance is to the, to the parking lot because the parking lot's in the back of the building. In which elevation is that? That is, That's one of those two, I'm assuming. Yes, that is the, the bottom elevation. Your main doors are underneath the Chick-fil-A sign there. Okay. <clears throat> so the top elevation faces Route 250. Correct. Okay. 
of which under normal circumstances that would be facing the rear of the site. There wouldn't be um, windows or glass on that side. Uh, they have been upgraded to, to include those elements given the, the sensitivity of the front yard. So then on the next page of elevations is that if you have west, east, yep. then I'm looking at uh, so the top of the south page, and north. The top of the page is facing south, the car wash, mm -hmm. and the bottom elevation is north. Okay. All right. I may have more questions, but mm -hmm. yeah, pass Tim, it on. Thanks, Tim. I mean, I just got a couple questions. Uh, the hours of operation. 6.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday through Saturday, closed on Sundays. And the, uh, what do you do about deliveries and stuff? Uh, where, where do they pull in, park? Yeah, deliveries are out, off hours, so uh, they navigate through the, the front of the parking lot and deliver off the back of a truck. Uh, the trucks are um, operated by Chick-fil-A, so they're in for, full control of their drivers. Uh, they have uh, protocols given we do have neighbors uh, in the back that um, they would do a, a route that eliminates any reversing or backing up of trucks to eliminate that, that noise. And it, it's a generally quiet uh, operation after hours. And the same uh, about refuse, you, you get the- uh, Trash. For the trash on site. Yes, and that would be uh, most likely early morning and they do, um, worst case scenario would be a, a daily pickup. Daily pickup, it's enclosed or? It's a masonry enclosure brick that matches uh, the building. That's at the north end? Yes, it's right at the beginning of the here. Yep. drive through aisles. <clears throat> it's, uh, you said uh, off hours for, uh, garbage pickup? Yeah, sometimes it, it depends on, on the lo local hauler who they uh, um, hire to, to do their daily pickup. It's probably gonna be a, a similar um, pickup route than neighboring McDonald's. You know, similarly use similar uh, demand for, for pickup requirements. Uh, most of the time it, it's early morning. Ideally it's early morning. So the doors swing away from the uh, drive through The doors swing open towards the drive through but if you'll see at the drive through entrance, um, it's wide enough for three lanes, but the three lane merge opens after, I guess the two lanes start. So the open doors would not conflict with that main uh, drive aisle as you approach the drive through It might be a problem. Uh, they do not con conflict. They're, they're designed so they don't conflict. So if somebody leaves the door open, uh, it would not conflict with the, the drive aisle. I think that's it for me right now. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to jump back in here quickly. I'm looking at the overall site plan, and it appears that a lot line goes from the northeast point of the property at a diagonal toward the southwest, that dotted line there. Is that, what does that represent? That's the limit of work. So that includes the disturbance required to uh, take out the existing ring road and reestablish the grass in that area. So that's a limit of disturbance line. Okay, so we'll then ultimately that parcel or the, that land that's to the east of the roadway, will Chick-fil-A be maintaining that or will that be that maintained is, and controlled by somebody else? Sure, so that's, um, Chick-fil-A is responsible for their on-site uh, area, so their lot, then they have shared responsibility for the access road, the ring road. Everything else is off the Chick-fil-A premises. So it would be the owner's obligation for uh, continued maintenance as they do today. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Kelly? Yeah. Sorry, Bob. So I'm looking at the aerial plan. So from what I'm seeing, there's three points of entry. 
Is that correct? Off of 250, 441. <laughs> and then there's this area that's behind the car wash that's there. So that's going to connect, that road will connect to that whole other plaza, Jeremiah's, everything? That's correct. As part of the Burger King project, I believe, that recently went in, they were obligated to, to continue that shared connectivity back behind the car wash that we'll connect to there. So are you at all concerned about people using this as a cut through to get to the other businesses? Uh, from 441? Sure, it's certainly a possibility. Actually, what it's designed for. Okay. Yeah. Part of the LUAMP plan back in 1990-something. 1990 1999, I think it was LUAMP. That was before my time, so it's got to be like 94 or something. Just say that louder so the audience can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the <coughs> that roadway system was part of the land use and access management plan done by the town back in the 1990s to yep. get traffic that are going in between businesses mm -hmm. off of 250 and 441. Do you would there be need for an, another traffic signal signal at 441? Because if if this is a, um, a potential for filling up 115 car spots, I would imagine that there's going to be a surge. In the traffic. access point at 441 is too close to the intersection. It wouldn't be a candidate for a signalized intersection. So the <coughs> probably the <coughs> encouragement would be anybody that's entering that. If they're entering from 441, they'd more easily be heading eastbound and turning right into that property. Or they'd have to watch out for oncoming, obviously oncoming traffic if they're heading westbound and turning south into that lot. And then if they're exiting there, it'd be a lot easier to turn eastbound. Mm -hmm. If they're headed westbound, the idea would be that they would exit onto 250, make a right on 250, and then get in the left lane to turn uh, left, So I would Tim, think. Would you be receptive to preparing a traffic calming plan that's a standalone site plan without a lot of the other detail um, that can show the town um, what measures are being taken for signage and stop bars and and so forth. Sure, for, for um, to kind of show that path and that it's uh, a traffic calming measure for along that way. So even if you do get some of the, the bypass traffic, it's not a straight shot where people are speeding like it's a roadway. Um, the, the turns and stop signs and the meandering through there helps as a traffic calming measure to, to slow vehicles down? Well, I think what, what Kelly's talking about is, is very relevant, and it also occurs to me that <clears throat> we're now completing the development of the service road and the businesses behind there. So um, it, it's, and, and this is a, 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 a denser use uh, than many of the other uses, so it makes a lot of sense to have a traffic calming plan that that the town can can review and, and maybe comment on. And, and what level detail uh, would you be looking for more than what's already currently shown on the site plan showing those um, signs, locations, and striping? My vote would be to get rid of all the other detail and just have a traffic calming plan. So you're showing access ways, the so three different just access uncheck ways. uncheck the layers. Yep. And Turn a lot of the layers off. Save to PDF. Um, Show the signage, uh, have, a, have a sign schedule there. Um, if there are any stop bars existing or proposed, you know, show those. Um, okay, and it might be helpful if we do it on the um, overlay. I think you did ask for a site plan overlay of the aerial that, that shows how that connection continues, so maybe we'll work off that plan. To, yeah, that'd to help be terrific. Focus yeah, be the, the identity there. Okay, and and I will just um, 
reiterate, I, I know it's been some time since this was submitted, but uh, July of, in the summer of, of last year, there was a, a full traffic impact study prepared that an, analyzed all three of these intersections. There's a lot of data and discussion in that report on um, projected or uh, anticipated traffic flow. Uh, DOT provided a response and comment and some um, feedback as well as the uh, town's engineer too. So there was a lot of discussion um, on those impacts, you know, previously in the record as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You good? Mm -hmm. Bob? Yeah, I'm good. You good? Okay. <coughs> At this point, I'd like to open it up to the audience. <laughs> and uh, just to remind everybody, <laughs> If you're not present here in the auditorium, you can call in at 585-340-8771. That's 585-340-8771. And you can alternatively submit a comment electronically on the Penfield website. It's penfield.org. And there should be a link to this meeting on the homepage. So the first person that we have is Mary Eberhardt. Um, hello, I'm Mary Eberhardt and I am practically a, going to be a neighbor of the new business. I live on Fairpoint Drive, which is within a good stone's throw of the property. And I do have some concerns, which um, Kelly, Ms. Aiken recently brought up. Um, uh, I live at Fairpoint and 250, which is Nine Mile Point Road. And back in the early 2000s, the residents did petition the town to have some type of um, traffic light there. And it's been addressed with flashing yellow lights now. This is near Eagle Vale Golf Course. Um, and I commute through this intersection. Um, I just am always through this intersection. And I'm just very concerned because we've had the development of Parker Place further down um, on 250 that has, I don't know the exact numbers, but certainly over 100 new units. And if those units bring one car conservatively, well, at least one car per unit, there's already a lot more people going to be on 250. So um, I'm just thinking from my personal level, just to get out of my own street, and get to my job is, is hard on a good day. Um, and I know that Chick-fil-A brings loads and loads of dedicated customers. And I, that's what I don't see here. Um, just people getting into the existing McDonald's mess up the left-hand turn, again, that I'm trying to make to get my, to my job every morning. I also have seen in the last six months um, two good ac or serious accidents that shut down the intersection during my commuting window. Um, I just can't imagine having another, well, you're planning for 155 cars can be at this site at any point. Having that met volume of um, traffic added to this intersection. So that's what I, I would love to hear. How is this traffic going to be handled? That meandering road there is really not used by anyone. <coughs> um, so to think that that's where you're going to get people on and off at 250 and 441, I don't think is realistic. So, and I have to say it's ironic that the town web page has a message from the town supervisor, and it is entitled um, Traffic Safety in Our Community. So where is our emphasis on traffic safety on this development? Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, there has been a traffic study uh, done for this. I don't have the information right in front of me. Uh, that can be certainly made available to you. The um, Route 250 is a state road, and not to pass the buck, but the town has virtually no control over My state mistake. roads. And I mean, we all would like a lot more lights and turning signals and things like that on uh, 250, 
there's numerous places mm -hmm. in the town that uh, uh, we all think could use in, in um, encouraging and convincing the state DOT to actually do that is a very long and arduous process. Not that it's impossible. Um, but the DOT gave a, a thumbs up to this, and I find that very surprising. And that's what the applicant said, that they got a letter of approval and positive comments. I'm not sure how that came even from the town traffic engineer. The, um, the other comment that you made about that road, um, I would agree with you in the past because it's really been you know, you're, it's almost like off-roading back it's full there. Of weeds, yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's getting a lot better, and it will be a, a lot better once all this uh, is done. The, the The idea behind that Luent plan that I mentioned earlier was to, for businesses that were inevitably going to come in to that area, um, it was to try to pre-plan to get more traffic and more uh, more ways to easily exit and enter so that you're not all going to one spot if it's a non-signalized intersection. And uh, so the concept here is that that road is in better condition and that from the various directions, you know, there will be, I'm sure, some natural, you know, when you live someplace, you live on Fairpoint. I, I live around the corner from here. And do I take that back road? Very rarely, but if it's a nice road, I may take it a lot more. And you start to plan the way you travel based on the conditions. Right, but even your own board member here pointed out that the road, you can't make a left-hand turn out of that onto 441. And if you're on different points of 441 trying to cross there with the Aldi, it's just in practicality, it's a disaster. And with 155 more cars per hour per whatever, um, it, the intersection can't handle that safely. And that's, I'm, an, I'm not an expert, I'm a driver though, and that's what I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, Jessica Anthony. Thank you, board. I prepared some comments tonight, but I did want to give a quick plug to thank you for making these meetings accessible to the community through the broadcast. I was not able to join in person when the applicant presented last year, but I was able to stay in the loop. She's, Thanks for the she's, comment. She's the one person that was watching us. Thank no, you. No, no, no. She's <laughs> one of <coughs> numerous, <laughs> countless thousands. <laughs> This applicant is not a good fit for the re redevelopment project at the 2130 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. My primary concern is for the safety of all travelers through the general business dis district zone. For the last five and a half years, I have lived exactly one mile east of this site. I have become intimately aware of the traffic patterns, especially during the evening dinner time. On top of residents returning home from work, picking up children from daycare centers at two, two different daycare centers within a half mile radius of each other. Additionally, there has been, I've noticed increased pedestrian traffic at the 250-441 intersection as well. At the first public hearing meeting for this applicant, board member Burton highlighted how the traffic study from the executive summary said, the report indicates a significant portion of the proposed volume comes from the existing traffic on Penfield Road and Fairport, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, and how the traffic from a study that might have been done two months ago might not be indicative of where we are in the immediate future. This was the most planful comment this board has made on this matter. I am in favor of bringing more business to Penfield. This site is not the place for this applicant. And don't get me wrong, this site needs and must be redeveloped. 
but if approved, adding this establishment to an already congested area would go directly against fulfilling Penfield's town motto of a town of planned progress and will be discussed in the future amongst the community as a gross misstep for the lack of consideration of the implications on the quality of life here. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Anyone else in the auditorium like to comment on this? Yes, Mr. Curry. Yeah, come on up. Thanks for letting me join. AJ, good to see you. The rest of the guys, um, long time Penfield resident, don't get here too often. Um, our property is uh, kind of on the back side of this on Bronston Drive, so I'm kind of uh, here representing myself and a few others. Uh, specifically, we're at 40. Um, obviously, just you some can of just our. state your name and, yes, and address for the record. Right in without Michael Curry, Mike Curry, 40 Bronston Drive. Um, and again, you can, I think you can see from the map there kind of roughly where that, where that is. Uh, lots of discussions in my 25 plus years here in the neighborhood on that Lou Amp uh, piece there. We've had discussions with over the years um, and even some of the other developments that have been on the table and some made it and others didn't. But obviously some of the, some of the things were always about hours of operation, lighting, smell, traffic flow, a lot, a lot of the things that we talked about here today already. Same same questions that I would have here. I've, I, I missed the first meeting, so thanks for allowing me to be here at this one here. And uh, yeah, some, some of my neighbors and I all have the same, same concerns. So maybe we start with, I think I heard hours of operation, 10.30. 6.30 to 6 10. 6.30 to 10. Uh, lighting, so I can speak from my backyard today, I think it's a sunset. It's no longer a sunset, it's the Burger King lighting. It's a bit of a joke, but it's really what, so you get people that come to your home for a little bit of an event on, on, on the deck and now you're looking at a red sign, a red banner that goes on the backside of a building. I'm guessing this is gonna be something similar lighting wise, so I'd have a concern with that. Um, on the smell, I know there's a lot of things that uh, kind of come into play now with some of the some of the fast food restaurants and some of the enablers that are in place to kind of minimize the smell from, right? But uh, I'm guessing again here there would be some some of that is built into the plan. And traffic flow is is huge, and that Lou Amp that we've heard of for a long time, L U A M P. Yep. It was developed 25 years ago when probably traffic was a lot different. Perhaps maybe they've made some revisions, I don't know, but absolutely more cars on the road today than there was 20 years ago, uh, perhaps. Uh, I, I, actually, I, yeah. so to clarify that, yeah. um, back when it was done, I'm, it was somewhere between 25 and 30 years ago, right. and <clears throat> there was a traffic engineer in uh, maybe a year or two ago that was involved with that mm -hmm. and uh, for another application on something completely different. And what blew me away was that they f have found that the traffic has actually been reduced on 250 because there's not as many Xerox workers in Webster. So, um, a lot of that traffic no longer, and they assumed that there was going to continue to be more and more and more traffic, mm -hmm. but that actually hasn't panned out. We might all think there is, but there actually hasn't been. Yeah, yeah, that's fair on the on the Xerox piece. Yep, can speak for that. Yeah, so I, I I would have a concern again both on the traffic flow as it's <coughs> being presented today. Just voicing my opinion. Uh, on that access road, and I know they're trying to make some improvements <coughs> to that. If they're talking about adjusting it, what it looks like today versus how it might flow tomorrow, I'd absolutely like, like to better understand that. Um, and if there is increased traffic back there, you can imagine what that might sound like to the property owners. Right. 
right? And I am, I am concerned about getting in and out of that LUAMP back there. I, I absolutely agree that over near Aldi's, if you're trying to swing in and make a left to your new favorite restaurant, it's tricky to get in there. Um, and uh, if you're gonna have more and more people trying to do that, that's a, that's a tough left-hand turn to make if you're heading west. Yeah, probably especially yeah. between 5 and 6.30 at night. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so we, we hear a lot of it and see a lot of it as neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. We hear a lot of the traffic. We hear some of the accidents that happen, et cetera, some of the sirens. So just would like to really understand what that will look like if indeed it's going to be different than it is today. And then maybe finally there's, I've had a lot of discussions with the town over the years about what was originally called kind of the forever wild or the, un, the, the area that's beyond this property but kind of feeds up into the, all of the homes that are along Bronston. And sort of that wetland area kind of? Sure, call it what you, yeah, it's been called a lot of different things, right? But uh, Matt, you know, what- Matt actually, I think north of that. So the tree line go south. So the tree line in between the homes to the east and the, uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. So I just would like to understand what, if anything, is done to that. As new development comes in, what, do, what does that forever wild wetland look like? Right, there's a small retention pond back there. I call it a retention pond. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, but I know the town has been good enough when I've reached out to them here in the last couple of months about some of the quote unquote construction equipment that was dumped back there from previous land owners. I think they've cleaned up a little bit of that, but when you've got a new tenant coming in, an incremental tenant coming in, you just want to make sure that that wetland property is cared for properly, whatever that mm -hmm. whatever that might be. So. Um, yeah, so those are my those are my concerns. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks for letting me uh That's what we're here for. Questions. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else in the auditorium uh here with us tonight like to comment on this? Okay, let me check and see if we have any calls. Again, three four zero eight seven seven one. We do have um uh, Electronic comment from Linda Teglesh at 3 Parham Drive. Two, she submits two comments. If both 250 and 441 have exits, will a left turn be allowed on both exits, 250 southbound and 441 westbound? Question mark. How did the traffic studies address this? And then the second comment, are the positive, the positive letters from the New York State DOT and the independent agency available on the town, wait a minute, are the positive letters from the New York DOT and the independent agency available on the town website? If residents want to review the DOT study, will the town make it available? And I believe those are... They're not on the website. They're foilable and we have copies upstairs at um, the planning <coughs> desk on the second floor. Um, they're open for inspection and review during business hours, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Okay, and uh, same thing with the traffic study. Yep. Right? Yep. All right, um, any other comments from the board members? Yeah, I had a <clears throat> question for, for staff. The property that I think is behind CAMS and is north of that, is that, <clears throat> is that a viable, developable site for future? Do we know? Um, we haven't had any specific proposals for it. Um, there is, um, there is area back there and I know there's, there, it's likely something will come eventually on the opposite side of that access road. Um, the way you're looking at it, and this is part of the reason we've, we've requested the aerial overlay, um, that road, that access road is moving a little further west from where it is currently located. Mm -hmm. There will be a little bit more land available to the east from where it presently sits. Um, so it'll be more, I 
I think closer to around where the property boundary is. I know it's hard to see on the, the screens. Um, a lot of it will come down to what's proposed, how it's proposed, and whether it meets and um, complies with zoning. Right. <clears throat> so there's a potential that that could add to that traffic. Potentially. Potentially. Whatever, whatever okay. goes there, I don't know. Yeah, I was there looking at that, and that looks that like the only area or parcel that really is left to be developed. Yeah, it's really the yeah. last area in that back area. Um, I, I mean, I think there is, if you were to go all the way down to the other end, south of Jeremiah's, there's still a lot that I think is part of that GB zoning. Behind that, it's BNR, uh, business non-retail. It's a okay. lot uh, lower intensity uh, allowable uses within the BNR. It's more service related um, over retail establishments, doctor's offices, professional offices, things like that. So f heading further south, there is more land that could potentially tie into this. How it would tie into 250 is yet to be seen. We haven't had any. We had one application three or four years ago down there, but it didn't go anywhere. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay, I will just open it up again. Any comments? All right, none from the board. Tim, thank you. If you have any final comments, you're free to make them or not. It's up to no, you. I appreciate everybody's feedback. Um, we'll certainly pull together that traffic calming plan. It seemed like that was a, a reoccurrence concern from the residents, so that might help um, delineate what we're, we're looking at to, to do here. So that was a good suggestion. We'll pull that together for the town. Um, I, w I would ask, is there a formal recommendation that we need to make tonight for the ZBA? Any other questions or confusion on the parking piece, or, or should we go pursue that with the ZBA next? I would say you should probably go pursue that with the ZBA. I do have one more comment uh, that was submitted electronically. Uh, again, from Linda Teglesh at 3 Parham Drive. Will clients be allowed to attempt left turns when exiting onto 250 or 441? My guess is those entrances and exits will not change from their present condition at this point in time. That's correct. Both those driveways are off-site. Off they're off-premises. They're not um, controlled by Chick-fil-A. And, and our site, uh, reminder, we're not proposing any new driveways out to roof 250 or 414. We're utilizing existing cross connections internally in the back that have been designed to support the commercial development like this. Um, really ideal location, you know, less curb cuts onto these main highways is, is traffic management, you know, focus. Um, so th those intersections have been analyzed in the traffic study that's been submitted to date. Uh, no mit mitigation is recommended or determined necessary at those driveways, and they will maintain operatable, uh, maintain the same operations they have today. Necessary at those driveways, and they will. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Tim. And we will call this hearing closed. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great night, everybody. Thank you. Okay. You want to start with Chick fil A since they're the last one, you want to move back to State Road. Let's go State Road. State Road, okay. I think um, just need to look at the um, EPOD mm -hmm. conditions and, and regulations and make sure that we're uh, the applicants cognizant and following them. Is that 10% and 90% accurate? I have to go back and look at, look at the specific yeah, regulations, but at I can it. run through the regulations and see so where they're Mike, sitting. What's the minimum distance between force mains, at, presumably at about the same elevation? You mean from force main to force main to force main? They can be right on top of each other. They can. Yeah, it's, they got to be separated from the water main. That's a 10 foot separation, so. OK. 
Okay. So, I mean, yeah, the force mains can be... It's <clears throat> and can they be located under pavement? Sure. I mean, theoretically, they're one continuous pipe, so hopefully they wouldn't break or... Otherwise, if they do, they're going to have to dig up the pavement, so... And this entry, it's almost 80 feet. 70, you said. 70 feet, so that's probably here to the back of the room. Yeah, I mean, a road right away is only 60 feet. More so than that. It's wider than a road that, it, you know, a standard road width. Right. Right away. Okay. Any other comments from board members on this? I just think we have to wait to see what the um, e pods, mm -hmm. yeah. and then take it from there because there's really. I think it's maybe appropriate to um, ask the applicant's consultant to prepare an e pod analysis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's four lots that they're proposing, and uh, it's heavily wooded. He's suggesting that there's a lot of. Um, trees there that are not salvageable. So and the town law requires the applicant to walk the property with the conservation board, right? I believe so. So I'm, since those are really the issues at hand, maybe it's appropriate to ask them to do that before they come back to the board. We can do that. Um, I do know <coughs> so we'll, we'll refer it to EECC when we get preliminary final application. For their review and recommendations, but they can they can do this step now. Yes, because yes. if this step doesn't pass muster, they might not have a project, or they might not have a project in its in its present condition, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that we need to put in the letter? Okay, somebody want to move that we start to draft it and then we can discuss it before the, you know, in the 637 hour in August? Yeah. I'll, what letter is it? The I'm sketch echoing. plan. Sketch letter. I'm echoing. Uh, move to draft the sketch letter. All right, you got a second? Sure, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Can I just remind everyone to keep their mic close to them so that we reduce that echo? Sure. We're getting a little feedback off of Kelly's mic. I don't know if uh, it got boosted by accident yeah, or. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> who's, who's the mystery offender? That was a mysterious answer. <laughs> wow. Something I ate? Cagey. <laughs> All, right, All right, we'll get started on that. Chick fil A. <laughs> um, takeaways. So <clears throat> I'd like to see the. Lighting plans expanded for the whole property. Um, that traffic plan that you suggested, uh, we should probably um, revisit the the actual traffic study mm -hmm. and um, So one of the recommendations of our consultant's review of the traffic study, and I think it's, I don't know if it was something we had discussed back um, in 2022, was also the potential to provide a grand opening plan to be developed for the high traffic volumes that are typically expected during the grand opening that will then peter out to the... Is it appropriate for us to ask uh, Tim uh, a question? Yeah. Do you want to just come up real quick, Tim? 
because I think we talked about this um, a year and a half ago, and I think you or one of your colleagues suggested that you always prepare a grand opening plan and where you think it's appropriate, you have people directing traffic and you hire off-duty police officers and you know, um, you've got people in vests and helping people navigate through the drive lanes and all of those things, am I right? <laughs> You're correct, and that's close to heart right now because we're dealing with two openings next week in um, the capital region, and we're going through that process right now, working with uh, local police, um, hiring off-duty cops to direct traffic. <coughs> we can we can provide you know high-level discussion of, of what that process is, but really to lock it in place, you, you need the, the grand opening date, what are sure. local events, what's the local traffic sure. patterns. Yeah, and what else is going on, holidays yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, one of the things that we had uh, asked you early on was um, about experiences in other locations. Um, and, you know, what happened after the, the, the mass push to get a chicken sandwich, the initial hype. Um, and we talked about that uh, a little bit, and you've given us some, some great information about other, other facilities that have similarities to this one, but um, I think really for benefit of the public and the, and the people that are concerned about that, um, those kinds of statistics in a report that they can see and read you know, would be really helpful. Yeah, sure, and, and the biggest impact that we've seen is, you know, first, maybe second to market locations. You know, fortunately, we've got some more in this county that really help, you know, statistically wise, um, the grand opening period is much shorter, much consolidated, and not as uh, impactful as the first to market. You know, Greece and Cicero, New York, and Syracuse were the first market locations that I think everybody heard about um, and learned from. So even if you don't, if you're not prepared for a grand opening uh, traffic plan, um, the, the mention of that prominently in your next um, cover letter to the town, I think would be well received by the community so that they know that there is a plan uh, that will be prepared uh, in place. Um. Sure, and, and we can demonstrate that commitment in, in, a, in a narrative form. <clears throat> Building mounted signs uh, also turn off after <coughs> hours? Yes. We had the one neighbor that uh, mentioned the Burger King sign that's on and flooding his property with. Yep, it is red. similarly backlit. You won't see any light bulbs, um, but you'll, you'll see the, the backlit sign, and then it'll be off when um, the store's closed. When it closes. Okay. If he's, if he's hosting on Sunday, he doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> right. We didn't really talk at all about architecture. Are there any ways that this can be enhanced, dressed up a little bit? I mean, it, it, I will say that it does seem somewhat basic. And if we could get some architectural enhancements to dress it up a little. That would be appreciated. I don't know. I'd also like to get the rest of the board's opinion on that. But yeah, <coughs> is there a specific thought or 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 style or suggestion that we could go back to the architect on? I, I will say, um, basic is, is is less than this. Basic um, has less windows and. You know, here we, we have added more glass given the, the sensitivity with the back of the building facing mm -hmm. the frontage. So um, there has been some upgrades to it. So this isn't the basic. We're not starting at the basic. Um, the basic is brick on the bottom. Sometimes they do um, um, EFIS, you know, in the, in the past other locations have had EFIS above that first band of color. This is full brick, two-tone brick. The whole building is brick. Um, there are the, the bronze canopies that hopefully tie in the offsite canopies to the building canopies and the trim of the canopy that all match. But it, if you're looking for, for anything specific or have a recommendation of another building to look at just to provide some feedback to the architect, that might help us look at what else we could do. 
So did we ask to have Chris look at this? Chris looked at it and provided a report on 627-2022. Okay. I don't and, think the exterior changed. My, yeah, my, my memory doesn't serve me. Talk closer to the I mic. I can't remember back to then. <laughs> did, closer to the mic. Did, uh, uh, did that result in any modifications to the exterior elevations <clears throat> to your recollection? I don't recall. Okay. We can certainly look back and revisit. Well, so it's fair to take another look at that. And uh, um, yeah, I would agree if, with that. If you guys need, I can resend the, rep the existing <coughs> report. Or yeah, do you guys want Chris to look at it again? I, I, you know, I don't think so. I, okay. I think I don't think that's necessary. It's. Uh, I mean, you know, my feeling, as you guys know, has always been. I I don't think the town tells people what their buildings should look like or logos to the extent that they mesh with the harmony that's really outlined in the town code so in the character that, of the neighborhood in the character of the neighborhood is one of the one of the uh, 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 provisions in the town code so we have an architectural consultant um, who's who's uh, very very good and uh, um, so if we've already done that, and, and, and maybe, some, maybe some modifications were made, maybe not. Um, the building was still evolving a little bit um, early on. So um, anyhow, yeah. something we need to look at. Well, certainly we look at it. Looking at these <coughs> elevations, I, I feel like some upgrades were made. You'll see the, the narrow windows. Um, we try to do glass wherever we can. Ideally, we'd like to extend those windows to match, you know, the rest of the windows all the way down, but that's that's the kitchen area where you've got shelving, racking, right. cooking equipment. So they, they put kind of that transom window where they can above those walls, um, but just because the utilities in the wall below those and, and the shelving, they, they can't extend those further down. But we'll revisit that letter and, and provide an update at the next meeting. Thank you. All right. Um, this is more an engineering question the comment about the intersection at Eagle Vale and Fairpoint Drive um, I'm, I know that's that's not that's actually Parenton so how do we handle that well, you know it's a state that, road yeah, this, it's so a state this, road, and, and, and we discussed it with right. the traffic consultant um, about, you know, the fact that historically some of the traffic that flows through the, the intersection of 250 and 4041 comes to and from Webster and to and from Fairport and Parenton, and it's, right. it is what it is. We don't control that, and they have different events and different times and, you know, different detours, and that, that is what it is. Um, <clears throat> I will say that um, there was there was some really good dialogue. There were some good um, explanations that you gave tonight that I think would, again, for the benefit of the public. Um, you talked about some of the similar facilities in our geographic region, um, where the seating area is almost identical. The buildings are a little bigger because the kitchens are bigger because. The business model has changed. And we talked about this when you first came through, um, the fact that there's much more drive-through traffic in a lot of facilities similar to Chick-fil-A. Um, so reiterating some of those things, I think, um, might be helpful. Sure. Buffer to the neighborhood to the east. <laughs> Does the property owner own all the way, or is there a strip of? I believe there's a separate owner that. Oh no, there's it's the same owner, but 2130 and 2195 are two separate parcels. Chick Fil A will be entirely on 2130, and it sounds like there's going to be a lot line shift. Um, so ultimately, I mean, it's the same owner, <coughs> but it's not. That it's not under review as part of this application. Right. Well, if you look directly. at this aerial, 
Um, mm -hmm. Some of that vegetation is really on the property where the subdivision mm -hmm. resides. Mm -hmm. um, but I did find it interesting, that comment about the, uh, uh, the light spillage from Burger King. Maybe right. that's something that the town could take a peek at. For sure. Yeah, that was the town board yeah. application. Yeah, the town board application. <coughs> Well, it's a, but it's, <laughs> it's a follow-up follow yeah. problem now. Yeah, yeah. correct. <clears throat> yeah, and, and yeah, just, those properties are lower elevation too. Yes, just to clarify, ownership, same ownership. Um, Chick Fil A will be leasing that entire lot. They won't own it or purchase it. They're going to be leasing from the owner. Not they, the entire lot. Just the Chick Fil A. Just the Chick Fil A. Lot. Portion the two point the two acres the rest right. of the three acres east of that road will be under control and of the owner. That's right. Do they lease all of their spaces? Yeah. Not not all, but majority of them. Yep. Okay. Anything else? That all covers it. So we need to put comments into a. Yeah, so, resolution. Yep, so I've got the traffic calming plan, photometric to the property boundaries, potential reduction in... Additional uh, review, re-review of the architectural... Yep, the update, uh, architectural. Updated, updated the traffic study. You want a full updated traffic study? I, th I think we need to consider that. I okay. think the applicant needs to consider yes. that. Yes, okay. We'll, we'll look at the future projections that were included in the you know in last year's study and you you look at you look at ask your consultant to look at what they think is appropriate um, I'm sure they've done dozens of them in this corridor since that one was completed so um, an update shouldn't be that that cumbersome <clears throat> We need a motion. Okay. Um, the other thing I got grease trap, uh, grease trap law. Um, provide um, written um, information based on parking demand at other locations, and uh, I think that was it. Thank you. I move to table. Second tidings. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Thank you. I appreciate the dialogue. Sure. Thank you. Any other business? Lori, I'm going to hand that to you. Doug, anything else on our agenda? Application. I don't believe so. Nope, that was all I had on our agenda. All right. That being said, we will adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Have a great rest of the month.